Please and please. No doubt. Our Heavenly Father, let us thank you for this day and bless each and every one that is in attendance at this meeting and give them travel and grace when they leave. Guide and direct us to do your work. And we know that it's better to give than receive. Overlook the soldiers overseas and see that they return home safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Curtis Now? Here. Chris So? Here. Bill Anglin? Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Harley Buzzer? Here. Julia Coates? Bradley Cobb? Um, Joe Crittenden? Here. Jody Fishinghop? Here. Meredith Fraley? Here. Janelle Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Here. Chuck Coskin Jr.? Here. Hannah Glory Jordan? Here. David Thornton? Here. Kara Callum Watts? Oh, honey. John Masters? Who? We do have a form. Like a crew for the February 17th minutes, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Mr. Chair. Yes, Jack. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to add two additional items. What is uh, a grant application to the Department of Justice? which Melody referred to earlier for Marshall Service. And the second is a grant application to the Department of Energy for our wind farm in uh, Shalaka. Second, the friendly amendment. To move Bobby Deere's presentation to the beginning before reports. Okay. Jackson, okay? Yes. Madam Marshall, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All the same sign. Okay, they will hear from Bobby Deer. Not, not Doug Deer. Deer Doug. Let's just think it each other. And Mr. Chair, thank you for the time and consideration of having Bobby come forward today. She's one of our my constituents, and she does a lot of work in recycling. So I appreciate the committee's uh, continued attention to sustainability issues in the Chair Nation. We appreciate your time today, Bobby. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for allowing me to come. Um, go ahead and slide it to the next slide. My name is Bobby Deer. Uh, my husband Joe and I own Cherokee Recycling, which is uh, based in Catoosa, Oklahoma. The reason I'm here to, to come and talk to you guys, let me tell you a little bit about myself real quickly. Uh, I was uh, raised in Catoosa. My mom was an environmental ecologist. She's a, a professor at the University of Tulsa in biology, and I was raised uh, understanding what uh, it means for, for us to have a relationship with nature and environmental sustainability when it wasn't quite so in to be green. It was it was part of who I was and part of uh, my upbringing. On the same side, my grandfather, uh, Joe Hill, he owned the only landfill in Tulsa. It was a private, but there wasn't a public dump. And so I was also raised on the dump. And I remember going up to the top. Of I did. That's what we called it. It was the dump. And uh, I'd go up to the top, and my whole family, my dad's side of the family, lived, uh, worked at the dump. And so I remember going up to the top and looking out over the hole and uh, seeing the, the poison landscape and, and seeing what was the exact opposite of, of the life that my mother showed me. So with these two things together, um, it kind of created in me what started this, this company, Cherokee Recycling, which is a lot more than, than just about recycling. Go ahead and set it to the next slide, please. <clears throat> I know that you guys already understand recycling. You know, I know that you want um, to, to have that in your businesses and your companies, your entities. I know that recycling is important, but I also know that um, you've got to figure out how to tell your people how you're spending your money and, and justify it. Right now, 90% of what's going into the landfill is, is recyclable material. It's, it's not trash. It wasn't that long ago that really nothing was trash. Um, but then we started creating things like plastic that, that we have no way of, uh, of 
recycling or, or reusing. So, but if we don't recycle the batteries, um, if we don't recycle the, the light bulbs, that hazardous material goes, leaches through the land into our, our water tables and, and it comes back to us. If we, if we don't recycle our e-waste, our electronic waste, our, our bottles, our cans, and it, it comes back to us in a way. Next. I need to tell you, because you already know the whole why it's good for the environment for us to recycle, you already know that the day has come where it, all of our trash has come back to us. Um, I want to talk to you about how recycling can be affordable. Uh, one way that we can make recycling affordable for the Cherokee Nation is through rebates. Uh, currently, economic trend is really poor for sellback of our recyclable material. We're not getting a whole lot back for the paper or the metals that we used to be able to, but that's going to change. And at one point in time, you could almost cover your recycling program cost with the rebates that you could get back. And I could see that that could come back again. Um, waste expenses, I personally have. One of my curbside recycling customers cut out uh, trash pickup altogether. He just makes sure that everything that he buys is recyclable. He doesn't buy the kinds of packaging that, that he can't recycle, or he might burn a little bit. He doesn't have any more trash. So he not only he's saving money by recycling because it costs more to, to have trash haul than to recycle. Uh, many, many of my curbside recycling customers went from two pickups to one pickup for their trash. Uh, I talked to the Fort Gibson Casino. By the way, I contracted with uh, several of the, um, well, all of the nine uh, CNE sites for recycling, and I went to Fort Gibson, and they recycle nothing right now, and about 75% of their trash pickup is cardboard only. So when I start picking up their cardboard and giving them money back for the cardboard that I pick up, um, they're going to cut, you know, three quarters of their trash pickup off and that's going to that's gonna help pay for their program. <coughs> Landfilling uh, costs a lot, uh, not just before or during, but afterwards um, cleaning up the land after the landfill is filled. And if 90% of our trash isn't trash at all, then only 10% of the money that we put, well not necessarily 10% of the money, but 10% of the landfill itself is, is necessary. So we could count money off that way as well. And grants, you know more about that than I do. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there for tribal entities, uh, more stuff coming out. I know that there's areas where you can get your bins paid for, all kinds of stuff that you can do to help um, make more uh, green uh, technology, that kind of thing, grants for you guys. And PR, <coughs> public relations, companies, organizations, Tribal entities trying to go green, trying to, to, to get the relationship back with the environment. Um, good things come back to them in many different ways. And it's not just monetarily, but you understand this. And donations. You donate your, your e-waste, your, your computers, your cell phones, um, copiers. You donate this, you get a tax write-off. So those are ways that we can make recycling affordable. Go ahead. Now I'm going to go through some numbers that I have real quickly and show you your possible impact, uh, Cherokee Nation and your entity's possible impact. I'm making some assumptions, but most of my numbers are solid. Uh, one assumption, 6,000 6, to 7,000 employees, let's say just less than half of that are in offices. Um, average office worker throws away two pounds of paper a day. Go through all that, you got 750 tons of paper thrown away. Next. Your environmental impact is this, almost 13,000 trees, 3,000 barrel, barrels of oil that's used, um, all kinds of energy, gallons of water that's polluted that we'll have to go back through another process to, to clean it up. Now let me go through some other numbers that I have. Go ahead. I feel like I need to go up there and start pushing the button myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly because these, you know, it's just numbers. We're multiplying, we're throwing it together, but I want to show you the impact at the very end. Right now, Catoosa Casino goes through 15,000 beer bottles per week. Um, they're not recycling all of them right now. They're going towards that, but they're not. And that's not talking about the other kinds of glass that they have. That's just the beer bottles. If you go through that, that's 163 tons of wasted glass per year. Next slide tells us that 
we're going to assume that all the other six casino properties, which is including Will Rogers Downs, has another combined 15,000 uh, beer bottles, just those other ones combined. Then the Cherokee Casino Kitchen just last week for me recycled uh, this amount of tin, aluminum, and plastic. They're only at about 40% of what they can, but this we're just going to use the numbers of what they did last week. And that comes to um, eight tons of tin per year, almost a ton of aluminum cans per year, and you know, 15 and a half tons of plastic. Uh, food distribution center, I, I wrote up a bid for them and I figured out how much cardboard they have. They've got about 1,500 pounds of cardboard right now per week that they're sending out. That's 39 tons a year. And I'm also currently working with Tom Elkins to, to figure out a proposal for the tribal facilities here. And just from the information I received from him about what they're wanting to do, I'm just going to talk about aluminum and plastic because the paper would be double dipping because we talked about paper earlier. And that's, they could do 25 tons of aluminum cans and 10 and so tons of plastic. Uh, this is the big picture. All those numbers I just threw at you, throw them all together, and you know that that's only about 40% of what's possible, but they're numbers that are real. Um, next slide tells you what your big picture impact is. Per year, you can save almost 9,000 barrels of oil from being used. Um, you know, almost a million pounds of air pollution that CO2 being spewed into our, and if we're cutting our trees down, which creates the oxygen and we're spewing out carbon dioxide, you can already tell that it's not good for humans that take in the oxygen. Um, and landfill space, 4,545 cubic yards of landfill space unused if this is recycled and not thrown away into the trash can. That landfill space is equivalent to about 22 and a half football fields long by 22 and a half football fields wide and six feet deep, just to give you kind of an idea of how much trash that's not trash that we're talking about. Um, I know you want to recycle. I know this is an important step for you. Cherokee Recycling is here to help you in whatever way that we can. You just got to tell us what you need uh, because I think we all understand that it's worth it. Mr. Chair. Yes. Thank you. And just to put it in perspective for Adair County, I believe the calculations were correct. Just if we look at 40% of estimated waste load that's easily recyclable, you're looking at the four acre landfill nine inches deep that we could have kept from going into the ground. Now we don't put all of our stuff into the Stillwell landfill, but if you want an idea of where we could have been investing our money to have prevented that whole situation in the first place, it would be to do what's right up front and to aggressively pursue doing what's right. And that's one year of impact, the nine just inches. One year, nine inches over four acres of physical trash, not to mention leachate or toxic chemicals in those things. And thank you, Bobby. Yeah. Pastor McCobb, um, a couple questions. Okay. Well, actually, three. Um, this is mostly commercial, and so with the exception of maybe that one guy you're talking about and this trash. This is mostly just commercial. Are you doing mostly commercial? You say no. Well, we started out doing curbside because I felt like curbside was the most important. I think that the, what it really comes down to is how convenient it is for you. Right. So if you put it right there on your curb, then it makes it really convenient. Um, however, you can't make any money. Um, you can't you can't keep a company just off of curbside recycling. It doesn't exist. So whenever I came to Cherokee Nation, it happened to be a time when people were wanting to do this, and it just kind of exploded. Okay, if, if I may. Okay. So let me. What I want to know is this: you pick up 780,000 beer bottles. <laughs> where where do they go? The 780,000 beer bottles are crushed down into a cullet that's a recyclable And my ultimate question is, who's doing this? I am. Okay, you are. You my are, people. The, are. My, my, yeah. The facilities I is what I'm getting at. I want to know kind of where, how many you employ. I just want to know. Okay, okay. No, no, this is a good question. Thank you. Okay, where does it go? Well, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm Tara certified vendor. Right, um, right now, I've, I've, I've hired three employees two of which did not have a job. All three of them are Cherokee. They did not have a job before they started this. And we're talking good 
peoples that come and show up every day. I can't believe they didn't have a job. But these people are coming in daily. They're, they're crushing down my glass. We're getting a tin together. We're going and selling it. They're, they're picking it up from the places. They're processing it into the different types. And then they go and they take it and sell it. So the, the area that we're doing it at is right at my home right now. I have a few acres that we can do it on. Um, so they bring it to my house and we separate so it. So my, uh, where I'm kind of eventually going with this is I know in the past what has happened, at least in this part of the country, is those people that buy that. Um, do, do you find that you have to, is it an issue finding somebody to buy that or are you basically set up? Do they? I have some really good connections. My metals are easy. Uh, right around the corner. All my metals are easily recyclable. Um, my paper is right around the corner as well. And it is difficult to recycle some types of paper right now with the economic trend. Um, they'll take cardboard. They didn't for a while, but they'll take cardboard paper, newspaper, and uh, office paper. But my mixed paper, which is really the bulk of what I get, um, I'm, I'm, I'm only allowed a certain amount um, to give them. I don't get any money for it, but they'll recycle only a certain amount. So that's kind of difficult. Plastics, um, easily recyclable are number twos and number ones. Everything that I get there are all recyclables, but number fives and number sevens, which we also get, are not recyclable in Oklahoma. Five and seven days. Oh, if you look on the bottom of uh, any, any, kind of, excuse me, any kind of plastic, if you look on the bottom, there's a little number inside of a little triangle, and this is a number one. And uh, number fives are like your butter dishes, and number sevens are like your pecani things. Yeah, so there's certain kinds. And it melts. That it's by rate of melting, so they put it together so they can melt it down and recycle it that way, and that's why you have to keep them separated by number. Okay. Does that answer my question? Is that it? I okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Uh, as far, uh, as far as an expert as you can get is what I am. So okay, it's a very good. Basic question. Um, on the big picture impact, it talks about the kilowatt hours of energy saved, three million. I mean, is that what we're saving the community at large because this is not being thrown away and has to be processed, or is that what your customers are realizing by virtue of? No, it's 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 the it's the creating of it. So if you if you recycle one aluminum can, then the amount of energy it takes to recycle that as opposed to the amount of energy it takes to, to ore bauxite and create it into a new aluminum can, that's where we're saving the energy. So it's, you know, the country that's saving the energy. It's not um, what we're finding in our own homes. But still, yet, it affects all of us, that energy, because using that energy, we're also spewing um, uh, you know, carbon dioxide into the air. That's where, where that kind of thing comes from. Creating the plastics is, is, is taking oil directly out of the earth and, and creating the plastic. Um, so the energy saved is in the creation of it from ore materials. Is there a problem right now that you may have addressed this in the market for you selling your recyclables? Is, yeah. There was a recycle, cycle, recycling company went out of business in the native business. Yeah. And, and this was not a great time for me to start my business. <clears throat> However, you know, to give kudos to the Cherokee Nation, um, you guys gave me my business startup loan and, and my first large contract. If it weren't for the Cherokee Nation, I would not be in business. So, yeah, this isn't a good time for recycling, but I guess if you're really passionate about it and you, you know, come and talk to people like you, then it might actually work out. It's not making a lot of money, no. Thank you. Thank you. Now, so I have a question. I, I got a question about... And I don't mean it bad, but I'm just going to okay. out there. If you come before the council, why aren't you going to CMB and talking to them? Or CMB? Yeah. Uh, well, CMB is actually contracting with me. And C&E is actually contracting with me. Um, and, and they're not at the c &E program that they've already created. They haven't asked me to come. And, and I go to their green team meetings. I help them figure out what it is that they want to do, uh, you know, to keep them. Don't use plastic. Use glass instead. Those kinds of things. So I'm doing that for them. Um, Care Count Watts asked me to come and talk to you guys about this. Um, because you are in a, a situation where you're wanting to make some decisions, and I thought maybe I could help. Okay, I just have some I, Yes, uh, Bobby, do you mind giving me your uh, telephone number? Because uh, in Delaware County, we have two recycling centers that are actually closing because they can't staff them, and maybe you guys can talk and get something going. But I heard the guys are realizing what oh, recycling, and they've had it for four or five years. And, are they, are they a buyback center? Is that? No, they're not a buyback center. They're, they're doing what I'm doing? They, they're, uh, 
with a volunteer group of people to take it and they stay there and just recycle it, then I suppose they sell it somewhere. Well, sure. I mean, I'll, I'll give them a call. You can give them a call me. Uh, it's 918-379-0046. And just to talk and see, there may be something you guys can look at. Sure. Councilor Lady Watts. Thank you. It, it, so I would hope that the body understands that there's more than just me or more than just a few people that are engaged in this issue and that Bobby as a tribal citizen is actually taking it to the next step where she's doing it as a business. And yes, she's already engaged in the tribe and doing things. But I asked her from her education, she does educational initiatives as just part of her community service. And I asked her to be a different voice to come here today. But one of the things that I think is critical about the numbers that we're presenting is it's not just the ongoing landfill issue and what we could have done to you know, slow the landfill being filled, uh, but it's also the perspective of the public relations as we advance on water rights and other issues that if we can demonstrate to the state that we are aggressively taking care of our own environment and being good stewards, that speaks volumes, and we can't pay for that after the fact. So the tribe has to make business decisions at some point or possibly um, actually mandate quotas for different things to be done, and I think that's what eventually this body will consider. Thank you. Okay. I have time for two more questions. Uh, yeah. Aaron Henry, did you want? No, no, I was just going to. Um, I know that we talked about this in an earlier committee. There were some estimates from a stimulus package, and I believe one of those estimates involved here environmental and green issues. Is there anybody here that has seen, not the audience, has seen any of the preliminary estimates on that? The stimulus package, any of the group leaders? Specifically, what part of it? Well, it, it, it wasn't specific. It just said uh, Similar package, and it, it basically involved environmental issues, recycling, and that was the gist of it. I just didn't know if there's anybody here that had actually seen a little more in depth on that. I'm just curious if you've seen any more in depth info. We've got a lot of communication from EPA, and a lot of the uh, you know, the stimulus money is coming down in various programs. So all of it is encouraged to have green initiatives built in that. Now, specifically within the EPA, we, we're getting funds to work on water lines, wastewater projects, things like that, and, the, and, and in coordination with IHS on some of those things. Uh, for specific on recycling, no. But we're getting a lot. I mean, they're encouraging green initiatives in every part of the stimulus package, every part of it. Councilor Larry Watts, did you want to? Are you going to move on this? No, I mean, I think that's all. I wanted her to just come educate us about the potential impact that we could have if we aggressively pursued recycling and other initiatives throughout the tribe and our businesses. Thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate the time, Chairman, and the committee. Thank you. Chair, Mr. Chair, can I steal five seconds? Five seconds. Okay. If this is increased, do you have the capability of handling the increase? Are you talking about the charter complex? Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Mm -hmm. We'll move on to reports, starting with uh, measurable resources, uh, Jack Palmer. Good afternoon, Councillor Snell and Councillors. Uh, it's my privilege to give you the report for the Management Resource Group today. We've mailed the, the uh, report to you previously. I don't have any additional uh, comments to make. I'll be happy to just try to answer any questions that you may have. Yes, Councillor Lady Pitchinhoff. Yes, I want to make sure that the bank changed stuff that I needed to do on the insurance and a couple of things. When I went over there, you're just out in the middle of the room talking to somebody with people all around you coming in and out about <coughs> the need change, dealing with all the HR stuff. Is there not any way you can remodel that and give people some privacy? Uh, I didn't hear the first part of the question. I went over there to change some stuff on some insurance and some policies over HR the other day. Mm -hmm. And when you go over there, everybody is just out in the room. There's no privacy. You sit there and talk to somebody, and there's somebody at the next door and the next desk, and you've got your files out there in the open. 
Can yeah. you do something about that? We'll try to look at that and see if we can do some kind of design, redesign on that for Yes, that bothers me. Okay. Thank you. No questions for Mr. Farm. No questions, thank you. <coughs> Real Estate Services, Linda Donaldson. Good afternoon. I believe um, you have my report also in the package. Um, the only thing I wanted to, to mention is that when I went to the meeting uh, where Mr. George Scabine was in attendance, he did say that a lot of the things that uh, the central office were on hold, and we have three things up there that we've been wanting to get done, the high school, the federal building, and the uh, patent trust. And I understand that all of those are sort of placed on hold waiting for the new uh, acting deputy secretary of the interior to be appointed. And hopefully once that happens, we'll be able to move on this faster. But right now I'm hearing they're just not moving up at D.C. on anything. So uh, that's basically my report. Are there any questions for Linda? Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Thank you. Roads and transportation, Michael Lynn. Good afternoon. Uh, I, too, believe that uh, you have my report for the month. Uh, I do have one minor change to the report. Uh, there's a project that's been added to the motor fuel tax funding to tribal funds for 186th Street uh, on the Washington-Tulsa County line. I believe Tulsa County is responsible for the road project. That will be forthcoming in the uh, upcoming executive uh, finance committee meeting, I guess, towards the end of the month. Are there any questions? Any questions for Michael? <clears throat> yes, no. I was reading my book here and I noticed where Councilor Snell had sponsored something for a bridge down in Sequoia County. It just gave the number <clears throat> to zero. So where is that bridge? That is the bridge uh, just past, uh, or just as you're headed towards uh, Marble City School. Uh, it's on the uh, old uh, Marble City Road, Blue Top Road, I guess you could call it. It's, the road is actually starting to dip in there where the uh, pipe, I believe it's a metal, uh, corrugated metal pipe Which underneath side there. Which Marble City School? Be on the Tahlequah side, okay. whatever side that road direction is. I just wanted to thank you. Yeah. It's, a, it's got a real low bridge, or a weight rating on it right now. Okay, thank you. I have no questions for Michael. Did you get both of your... Yes, the, the public comments just available for, for people who may have public comments uh, that we'd like to take note of while we're here. If there's no public comments, that'll be it. Thank you, Mark. The Bar Mill Program, uh, Ryan Dawson. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hello, Good afternoon. Tom. How are you, sir? Uh, you have our report as well, so I won't elaborate on that. Uh, I, I have been elaborating a little bit on the green policies that we've had here and going back and forth. One of the uh, things I'd like to mention is our uh, potential, I guess, contract with uh, uh, Cherokee Recycling, the young lady that was here presenting. We've um, we put out a, a request for bid on something, and she, her company was the only one that came back. We went back and forth a little bit, and we're still trying to iron out how best we can do that for the nation. Uh, one of the, some of the things we're looking at is buying some of these small recycling bins with uh, wheels on them so that uh, we can put office paper in there, newspaper, things like that, cans, plastic, things like that, and have them taken to a central location here on the campus here, and then having her company come by and, uh, and take those off and recycle those. We've had a couple different scenarios on that. We're working through that and seeing which way is the most efficient that would get us by for the least money that would be the most efficient that she could do and do uh, effectively. And I think we're, we're coming down to the wire on that. I think we'll have that in the next day or two. But uh, that's where we're at on that. And uh, we'll be happy to take any questions. So, for example, in Vanita, there's an office and there's a number of staff, and if you did recycling, that office might be embraced in this recycling policy. 
The one in Veneta, the city? Right. Right now we're working on Tahlequah because, like the health, the clinic up there, health in and of itself goes by and gets their paper. They've been doing that for a long time. Some of our other areas we've been doing that. We wanted to concentrate on Tahlequah, get that down pat first, and then look at the area offices. Like our office is a satellite office. It's in Tahlequah, but it's on Allen Road. We've been doing the recycling over here. In fact, we bought the baler, the cardboard baler, for the complex a few years back. But some of the offices that aren't too far away have already been doing that. And as we get that down pat, then we'll look out. Let's go down the road. Remote office like Benita is embraced. I mean, it, obviously there's a there's also a housing complex there. There's apartments, so exactly you you would in, include those residents too. Well, and rather than bring it to Tahlequah, if we could find a way to do it a little closer area there, as long as it gets done, we don't really care. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Mayor Fisher Hall. You know, Tom, can you brief us on the problem we're having with the liners not being welded together over at the landfill and A and M? I don't understand it all. Any of signing off on it? There was an issue with, and it's kind of hard for me to explain it in 3D here, but we have a part of the landfill that was pre-subtitle D before the Resource Conservation Recovery Act uh, regulations came out, so it doesn't have a liner on it besides a clay, well, no liner on it at all. Then we have another part that has a liner and another relatively newer part that has a liner. We have two new cells that are being added onto that. Where these two cells that have a liner were put together, they were kind of, uh, there was no good way to put them together. The plans called for all the liner to be welded. There was a patch about 10 to 12 feet that was not welded at the tie-in of those two. That was covered in, was covered in with clay, and it was covered. There was no apparent leakage of anything. But there, that 10 to 12 foot of liner was not welded. Some parts of the plan say, I mean, it just says it would be welded, uh, and a uh, PE signed off on that. The company that, that did it said that we planned for that little part not to be welded. Why they would plan on that not to be welded, I don't know. Was there an issue with it? I don't think so. But part of we had a special EPC meeting last month to address how that could be repaired, and not so much repaired as how this new cell could be tied into that and fixed. And so what they've done, uh, their engineer, CNB's engineer, Sir Kenneth West Management, uh, did a, a draw up of how this new liner would go in there and be welded to that and be fixed. So you don't think there's any liability involved? In uh, I don't believe so, ma'am. I've looked at it, and it, does, it sure doesn't look like anything. But um, I don't know how we – I don't think it was good practice, but I don't think there were any environmental issues with it. I think it was a poor practice to do that, definitely. We don't use anything anymore, do we? No, ma'am. Not, not for our contractor, no, ma'am. Any more questions for Mr. Elkins? Yes, sir. Uh, Tom, I guess the question I had at that meeting was we didn't know about that breach or that non-well area until we uncovered it. Is that exactly. True? I have a concern about other areas of that liner that might be welded or hopefully uh, wouldn't be that it wasn't welded or the... Uh, Liquid and all the contaminant possibilities could be leaching into the into the soil, and that, and that wasn't I don't think really addressed the other day at that meeting. Uh, well, and, and it's that that should be there. Ideally, you would want all of it to be welded, but I guess from a risk standpoint of that, there were years when, and currently even not our landfill, but other landfills around the country get um, waivers to where they don't have to use plastic liners. And so they have feet of clay under them. So even though that didn't have a welded part under there, there were feet of clay under that anyway. 
So I'm not saying it's a good thing because obviously we use liners. But I don't think it, from a risk standpoint, I don't think it was an issue. Uh, should it be fixed? Sure it should. Should, it, should we try to never have that again? Certainly. And that's why we do extensive water sampling to ensure that nothing comes out of there. Thank you. Any more questions for Jack? Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Yes, sir. Thank you. Moving on to old business. Here at Calvin. Number one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you don't mind tabling it until next week I'm, or next month, I will uh, discuss it with the chief one more time before we present some actual numerical goals or criteria for the tribe. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Table for one month. Moving now to new business. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. This uh, grant is for the EPA 2010 Clean Water 106 project, which would uh, it, it would uh, have clean water education and increase our macro invertebrate sampling for the biota diversity. Uh, I would like to make a motion to approve and invite Mr. Buzzard and Mr. Snell, Councilman Buzzard and Snell, to also co-sponsor it with me. Sure, may have to go. Yes. Well, second. 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 Councilman England seconded it. Second. So we're moving for. Uh, Approval? It's been moved. We're talking about All in favor? <laughs> okay. Aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed? Okay. All opposed? All opposed? All opposed? All opposed? All opposed? All opposed? All so I'd like to invite Councilman Cobb to join me on this as a co-sponsor and make a motion to approve. I would accept that. Second. He seconded to you. Did you second that, Mr. Cobb? I did. All in favor of the motion? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item number three. Uh, Michael Lamb, you want to? Thank you. This is the this is the bridge that uh, Councilor Fulbright was asking about earlier. The resolution. Uh, the commissioners came to the tribe requesting to submit uh, for IRR bridge funds, bridge replacement funds. This project uh, or the road is on our inventory and eligible for uh, bridge replacement funds. Uh, that is a competitive process. There's no guarantee on it. Uh, this resolution will just authorize us to uh, seek that funding. Move for approval. Move for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Mike. Item number four, Mr. Donovan Harvey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is to correct the legal description on the Three Rivers Land and Trust. Uh, it's changed it to lot one, block one, certain section, so forth. I make a motion we approve Second. it. Put it on the agenda for the, tonight. Second. Council meeting. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion Item number five. Mr. Chair, what? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is for uh, a lease. For the trust on trust property at Cherokee Casino concerning both the Toby Keith restaurant as well as uh, Migs or Migs Jewelry. Um, there is no waiver of sovereign immunity required. It, it is just to authorize the lease because it is on trust property. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 
Item number seven. Here is Bradley. Resolution authorizes the Commission to grant application to the Department of Justice, Office of the Community Oriented Police Force, with yes. funding under the Child Resource Grant. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an application uh, to apply for um, up to $400,000, no match required, right? For um, policing equipment, uh, such as bulletproof vests, vehicles, um, communications technology, etc. And uh, is this part of the stimulus? Sure. It is part of the stimulus. That's why there's no match. Yeah. I would move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Mr. Chair, I'm sorry I forgot and ask that this be placed on the agenda for tonight. Can I ask yes. a question? Uh, Sharon, Sharon, this doesn't have anything to do with personnel. It's for equipment only? Correct. I mean, you can apply for personnel, but we don't intend to. Um, one of the requirements is that if you put on personnel and there's no match, you'd have to keep them a year afterwards for a total year. Uh, our budget hasn't <coughs> increased in several years. So I don't know how that we would uh, anticipate that growth, and we have critical infrastructure we haven't taken care of. So. Well, now I asked Sharon, I asked Melanie that very same question, and I think we're we're all, we're ta all talking about the same thing, right? Yes. No additional personnel. You just want to get equipment for the personnel you have. Correct. Now. Okay. And what Melanie was talking about then in a prior meeting was this money. Yes, it's called the COPS Hiring okay. Recovery Program. That's the title of it. But you can use it for hiring or equipment or rehiring old employees, a lot of different things. And uh, we have some infrastructure that needs to be taken care of, so we were going to use it for equipment. Thank you. Item 8, Mr. Councilman Baker. Yes, this is a resolution for the Green Energy Project to protect the nation's businesses and submit a grant application to the Department of Energy for reconstruction projects in Shalaka that are land there. And the grant application has up to one million and the preliminary budget of 870500 for reconstruction expenses. It does require 100% match. However, the CMB approved in their budget September 27, 2008, uh, 1350000 and most of those funds are still available for the match. Second. Okay. Do we have any questions for that? Pardon? Yes, second. Uh, we'll talk second. I have a question. Uh, do we know, I was just reading the other day, there was some tribe that applied for these funds. And uh, I was wondering what the wind speed, average wind speed is there at Shalaka. It's about 10.4 meters a second. Just about uh, 16, 17 miles an hour. I think this tribe has 16 miles an hour too. We have good, it's, we have good wind speed. It's not great as some states, but it's good. So the average is about 16 miles. Okay, thank you. Yes. What, what does it take for the average wind speed to keep these uh, where they're not in energy? Would you would you come to front, Thank you. Uh, well, it takes about seven miles an hour to turn the blades on those huge ones, but uh, 11 miles an hour and up is good wind speed for for uh, profitability. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, More questions? All in favor of the resolutions? Aye. Uh, All opposed? Oh, but then this does need to go to full council tonight. Full council tonight. Moving on, any announcements? No last question. Move for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.